give him the banana right there. You can go ahead. That's a big old banana. Oh, Kenya's getting brave. All right, we got the keys right here because Petrie is an escape artist. So if we don't lock it up, he might be able to get out. Petrie. Oh. going on Blake's exotic and ranch today's video is going to be sponsored by simply safe this is a reliable home security system that will make sure your home is safe so the reason why I decided to go with simply safe is because it has so many different types of devices that will work very well here on the ranch so we're inside my building and simply safe is going to be inside of here we have a keypad that is right here that will be able to arm and unarm my doors for inside of my building this will help so that no people can come inside of here without me being here because it's gonna have a code. On top of that, we have sensors. These sensors are gonna help to make sure the whole entire barn is safe from no people coming inside of it. And on top of it, you guys remember, if any fish jump out as well, so that's gonna help in two different ways. So there's sensors on the door. That will notify me on my app and right here to tell me if that door is open or closed. So then if it's open, I can come over here and close it. And if it's closed, I know that I didn't leave the door open. Another really cool thing about what this Simply Safe has in store for us is I'm gonna show you right behind us. So you guys remember, unfortunately, back in the day, we had a really bad barn fire and there was smoke and stuff like that. And I wasn't home for that situation. We have a smoke detector now that will help me and notify me if there's any smoke that's happening inside of the building. Another cool thing we have as well, is this little device right here. We have to place it somewhere. Not too sure exactly where. This is a sensor and it's gonna tell me what the temperature is inside of the building. If it gets too hot, I have to open up my garage door so that it can cool down the barn to make sure the animals are nice and safe. We place two cameras inside of the fish gallery. One right here, that's gonna go right behind you guys and that's gonna help to make sure the arowanas and the arapaima don't jump out of the pool pond and the sensors are gonna help with that even more. So if anything moves, we're gonna catch it right on tape and know what's gonna happen. And it's gonna notify me right on my phone so that I know I can run over here really quickly to save that fish. So this is the home base right here. This is the brain of all the little devices that are inside of the building. This will make sure to communicate with me and the phone that everything is working correctly. So it was very easy to set up this whole system. It took less than an hour to get everything put together. And on top of that, every time we leave this building, we press our code, we press the away. If anything goes off, it will notify the police that something has gone off. So if you guys would like Simply Safe to be part of your home or for your ranch, make sure you guys go down to the description to simplysafe.com slash Blake's Exotic, you guys. Welcome back to another video here at Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch. Today, you guys, we are back home from Costa Rica, but we have a ton of videos for you all, so stay tuned for all that as well. But today, where we're standing, where we're at, is we're right here with Petrie's enclosure, and it's been a little while now that we haven't really done anything to his enclosure. It has a lot of vines on it, it has a lot of things going on here, and it is, uh, it's really like, kind of beat up. So what we're gonna do is we have mulch, we got some new bushes right here, we got a couple things, and we're gonna just, you know, prep it up, make it a little cleaner, make it a little nicer, and make it dope and make it more presentable for me, you, and Petrie as well. So let's open this door up and let's get it going. If you guys haven't seen on Instagram, if you're not following me there, one of the call ducks we had here, she's a little bit bigger. She's actually the call duck that's mixed Indian runner, but she thought she laid these eggs. She didn't lay those eggs. It was a call duck that laid the eggs and she hatched out some call duck babies. Check them out. We got three little ducklings right here. One white <clears throat> and two that I'm not too sure what colors they're really gonna be. They might be khaki. They might be blues, they might be snowies, but we'll see in the future. Hopefully they do good. They've been doing very, very well here on the ranch. They've been swimming in the aquascape ecosystem without a problem, diving down, learning from all their uh, friends and families and all those cool little things. And a really cool thing you see in that far co corner, we have another white call duck right there on actually 10 eggs. So hopefully we have a lot. And uh, Kenya right here. <laughs> if you can make it, holy my God, you're trying to kill me. All right, we got the keys right here because Petrie is an escape artist. So if we don't lock it up, he might be able to get out. So we don't want that to happen. Obviously, that won't be a good thing. So we got the keys right here. It's still a little early out. The sun goes down here in South Florida around 745-ish. It's actually right now 623. Oh, speaking too soon. Petrie hears me talking a lot and he just came out and said, hey, what's going on? He's been in a pretty good mood. So I thought it would be a good time for us to film Petrie. 
With me, he's perfect, but because Cassandra's in the back of the camera, he might try to attack her. So that's why I said today might be a good way to do it. And if you hear closely in the background, all the birds are talking and Oliver is talking like crazy. He's like, I want to be with you really, really bad. <clears throat> but let's open this bad boy up and let's just start taking all the weeds out. We're going to take out all the little old corn pieces and just, you know, prep it up, clean it up a little bit. And then we have some hibiscus bushes we're gonna um, add in there as well. I like putting hibiscus as much as I can around the property because once it gets a certain size, I just cut back and I can store it to the tortoise and it's a nice healthy thing for them. For them, See, that's why we have hibiscus there. We just have hibiscus all over the place. So uh, it's nice and open and uh, let's get it going. Petrie, you can be a good boy today. Hey Petrie, you're a good boy. He has really, really sharp claws and really big fangs, but he's just smelling me all up and checking me all out. You gotta just be a little calm with him, maybe too, too crazy. But Peter, we're gonna clean your cage out today, all right, buddy? He has those big, dark, black eyes because he's a nocturnal animal. And he was not a rescue. He was given to me from somebody else that somebody couldn't really take care of him anymore. They decided that they were gonna be too much traveling. It wasn't a really a good pet. So that's one of the main reasons why I tell you guys, you're gonna get an exotic animal. You just gotta remember that. These guys are a lot of work and you wanna make sure you're able to support their life for a very long time. Peter, you can live for over 20 plus years. Hello. 20 plus years, it's a long time you guys. So uh, let's get this going and uh, let's clean it all up. Get to it. All right, so we're just gonna grab everything out. Ah, I hit some poop already. We got a nice chain right here. All right, so how about Cassandra? You can throw it back a little bit and I'm just gonna start throwing weeds out. That's what we're gonna do because he, that's the best thing to do I think. I don't even see his log anymore. What kind of leaves are those? It's just a weed that has taken over, and there's a lot of it. It looks like, like pumpkin or watermelon. It kind of does look like pumpkin. <laughs> oh, almost stripped in there. Okay. Even Lex is getting a ton of it, too. We got all that out. Woo! Let's get some more out. We got it all out over here. We had a plant that's right here. Forget the name of it. It has like these purple flowers on it and everything. You actually go in water as well. We had it on this side, but the capybara has ate it all up and it started growing in the inside now, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna let it grow on the inside and just let it be. And then we had a bunch of Green Island ficus placed around the side of the building, but that didn't work so good either for the capybaras. So I'm not really good on my plants. I'm learning my plants little by little. But the plants over there with the yellow and green leaves, put it down in the comments if you know what those are. Capybaras don't eat those, so those are gonna get placed all around the building so that it looks nice and pretty. Uh-oh, chicken, don't wanna go in there. Don't know what Peachy's gonna do to you. Get out, buddy. All right. Let's get it all up. He's on your butt. Hey, Petri. He's jumping on you. Watch out, Petri. Appreciate it, Cassandra, being the backup that I need. All right, let's get that out. Get everything out. We got a lot of, we got two more bags of cypress mulch just to like cushion it up, make it a little bit prettier. I know some people are going to be like, oh, it looks more natural and pretty, but this stuff is just not, it's not, it's not that it's not healthy. It's just sometimes not safe because a lot of little creatures can hide in here, like uh, venomous snakes, and you wouldn't want that just in case. So if we did see a venomous snake. We would, uh, if it was you guys, you'd call somebody to take it out and move it in a different place. If not, if you know what you're doing, then I guess you can move it. But that's when the mistakes happen, so you don't want to do it on your own just in case. Personally, I probably wouldn't do it. Probably call a buddy of mine. But uh, yeah, get them all out. Maybe we'll go grab a couple more new branches as well in here to like maybe pop a little bit more. Not too sure. We'll see if we can find some stuff. Uh, what we should do is get a rake. Let's get a rake. I'm gonna go find a rake. I'll be back. We got a rake. Taking out majority of the top layer of all the debris. So any buildup of poop, uh, old fruit, old corn, anything like that. We're gonna get it all out. Just like a... Uh, this is like a, uh, what do you say, a couple month maintenance you have to do. So every three to six months, it matters how bad it looks in here. So every three months, you go inside of here and you get everything out and just clean it all up and make it look nice again. All right, so get all this. 
just go right out that way. With all that over there, it would just go into the ground, or what I could do is pick it up, obviously, and throw it in a garbage bag. A lot of old uh, grass over here that I really don't like. Kenya should be taking out some uh, a, a, a bowl for me soon. I asked her to get me a bowl for Petrie so we can show you how this gorgeous little guy eats some food out of her hands. Got a nice branch right here that fell down. Put that back up. There Just chilling there, hanging out. So this guy is nocturnal like we were talking about earlier and he is a uh, nickname is called a honey bear. They're from South America. Their tail is prehensile tail. It's a prehensile tail. So it's like a fifth arm there. So they have the four legs, two back, two front, and their back tail is made to help them go down a tree, up a tree, hold on to things, all different types of stuff just in case he's almost about to fall out of a tree and all those things. They don't make too many noises. They make this one little call every once in a while. It does it for... Not too sure why he really does it. Never haven't really figured it out yet. So if you guys know why he does it, let me know. But he does this little like, I don't know, maybe we'll get it for you one day. But he makes a different noise every once in a while. But let's get back in here, keep getting some more. What else we got? Let's go to this back corner over here. And I'll just update you guys a little bit. So if you guys are big ranch fans and are the ranch fam, and you guys been wondering all different types of things that have been going on here on the ranch, we're getting close to getting the aviary done. We're gonna have some of our friends come by soon and we are gonna have a new video for you guys on an update on the aviary coming very soon for you all. We have one more poll we have to play, so stay tuned for that. It's gonna be an exciting day on that, but we're almost there, almost there. Ready? So Kenya's coming in right now, and what do you have? You got a cup for Nutella and peanut? Yep. And what else you got? Oh, look at Petrie. Look, that was the tail of you guys about hanging on to the fence, can making I give sure. Him his banana? Yeah, give him the banana right there. You can. Go ahead. That's a big old banana. Oh, Kenya's getting brave. He's gonna grab it, and he got it. He'll eat the peel and everything, he'll rip it all up. He's using his mouth to go into his little hide box. Oh, there he goes. He's like, I don't wanna be on camera. Yeah, go down. Tail's getting used for extra support, and he's down there munching it all up. What else you got in that buck bowl right there? He's eating good, huh? Grapes. Sweet potato, tomato, apples, corn, green beans. Hey, wait, peppers. can you take off that sticker? Sorry. Peppers, orange. I think that's it. Cucumbers. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna add in these hibiscus bushes. We pretty much cleaned the whole entire bottom with autochrome. Put the hibiscus first, and then we will add the mulch. Let me actually get a little bit more of this front of all these weeds off a little more. Get this damn thing out of here. Happy bears want to eat all my expensive bushes, but they can't eat the weeds. At least they can eat the weeds for me. That would help. So I think we have four hibiscus bushes, two yellows, two pinks. So I'm gonna add one right about there. Uh, we got small ones, they're not too big, so we don't have to dig them too far, but everything grows. They all will get big and we'll just trim them so that he has a little jungle on the floor. All right, so we got one hole done. Uh, I'm gonna move this log a little bit differently so that he can have the plants grow. Okay. So 
so we'll put the plants here in this section. So this would be a pink flowered hibiscus. Take that out, drop it right in the hole. Perfect size right there. And this is nice rich dirt from all of Petrie's back end stuff and his pee and everything like that. And then when we walk by to give everybody water, we'll give him water, give the plants water as well. I know they're small, but I don't want to spend a lot of money in here. Just in case he decided to go ham and start eating everything up, I want to spend only a couple dollars on these little plants. Look at the baby ducks climbing the mountain. <laughs> Having a blast over there. <laughs> right, we got that other one there. And let me go grab one last hibiscus bush to put in here. We're only gonna put three. We'll add another one for another tortoise enclosure somewhere else, which isn't a problem. More hibiscus doesn't hurt. But we'll just grab another yellow with three gorgeous little flowers on them. Oh, we got a sticker. Get that guy out, here we go. Pull that out and drop it in, perfect. Grab all the dirt, put it all back in. New little bit of smells for him. Little bit of new things for him. Hang out, Petrie's probably just about three years old now, living life, doing his thing, hanging out. I know a lot of people are wondering, oh, put Petrie inside the aviary. Oh, do this, do that, unfortunately, the netting that we're putting on the aviary will not be able to withstand parrots or any kind of hard-billed birds. They're only gonna be soft-billed bird animals in there. So birds like ducks, um, birds like cranes, things that eat fruits and stuff, things that don't break through wood or through netting. It's just soft-billed animals. So they won't be able to puncture or break the netting. But there's gonna be a lot of really, really cool birds that probably a lot of you have never seen before. But yeah, Peachy will be staying here. Maybe we'll build him another cage down the road, maybe something even taller, who knows. As of right now, it will stay just like this. He's living his best life, doing really, really well. We're gonna call him out in a second with some grapes and uh, show you guys how he eats a couple grapes. Set up his water bowl back up, get his food bowl. Probably what I always do anyways is clean this down so we'll get a little water, clean that down. But other than that, we're pretty much done. The last thing that we do need is to get the two bags of cypress mulch, add a little bit more cypress mulch in here. Let me go grab that real quick and let's throw that down. We got cypress mulch. This is pretty much the best type of mulch to use. I use this for the tortoises. It's great for the animals as well. It has no chemicals, anything on it. Chicken, get out of Petrie's cage. But um, let's go throw that down in there for some new substrate. And it'll make it pop just like that, like crazy. This stuff makes everything look just that much more better. Thank you. More spots for him to poop and pee on. And he'll flatten it all out, spreading a little bit, but nothing too crazy. The last bag will go right here in this spot. We might need it one more bag, but it's all right. It's all right. We'll get another one later. Put it down in the comments, you guys. What videos would you like to see next? What animal would you like to see next? What would you like to do next? Um, I have ideas, but sometimes I want to see what you guys want to do. And... You know, see what you guys want to do. I put him away. There you go. My goodness. Did I just take a flower out here, Kenya? Flower for Big G. Where is he? Just come out with a flower. I think that is it, you guys. I'm pretty good with what it looks like. 
Petrie, told you, we were talking all earlier, and it was still too early for Petrie. He's, <laughs> he was down in there, he's like, I'm going back to bed, it's too early for me. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab a keep, keep, blah, 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 blah. We're gonna grab a couple pieces of grapes and bring them down, show you this little guy one more time. And that is pretty much it. We got his enclosure nice and prepped and pretty much clean. We need one more bag for that back corner, but other than that, 90%, 95% of the whole enclosure just got cleaned out, new bushes in it, new little area. Definitely needs a new towel. Let me grab that thing out of here. That's uh, ready for a new one. He has to go in the washer and get a new one for him. Even though it's getting hot now, he only needs that for winter time. The heat of Florida is definitely starting to show. So uh, yeah, let me grab a couple pieces of grapes for my little guy, Peach. Because he loves grapes. Kenya's over there still trying to get Big G though. He's literally staring at me now. I just fed him one. That might be one. Petri! Hey! Petri! Oh. Grape. Grape, Petri. You want grape, Petri? Yeah. You want grape? Come. You want grape? You know you want grape. Alright, look, you guys. Ready? Give me a grape. Give me Give me <laughs> He's like, I don't want to climb on you. It's way too early. Come on. Come and get the grape. I'm trying to Come and get over here. Come on. Show, you, show everybody your whole body. Come on. Come on. Hello, Petrie. Well, still too early, but that is Petrie for you guys. He is doing great. He's doing amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Cleaning it all up. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel. Give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the upcoming video. Peace out, everyone.